I'm Andrew Nesky. This is Science in the Outer Streams. We're here with Bishop William E. Swing, the Episcopal Bishop from California. Bishop Swing is involved with the United Religions uh, Internet Initiative, which is being formed in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania this weekend. Uh, we're very, very, um, uh, very, very lucky uh, to have uh, Bishop Swing here with us. And uh, Bishop Swing, I, I, this is our third segment. We want to make sure we get as much information in. You know, we've been talking a lot about your particular perspective on this and how you came to it. But, I mean, obviously the other people who have decided, there's a certain courage that it takes to do this. And, and other people have had to, had to embrace this mandate as well and, and, to, and to be courageous. Because I'm, I'm sure that uh, as there are people in Christianity that are saying, you, what are you doing? Uh, you know, that this whole peace thing is for governments to handle that there are people on the other side saying to, uh, to the, uh, the, the, the Muslim uh, uh, members of, of your coalition and the, saying the same thing. I mean, obviously, we, you know, in the West we hear a lot about jihad, and, and uh, we see people blowing, uh, young men strapping bombs to themselves and blowing themselves up in a square in Israel. How did you, how, how, did, how, were, you re- how, did, how were you received? Uh, how, how did, uh, <laughs> how did I, I, it's very, it, it's amazing to me how you made any headway at all. Well, um, I remember walking down an alley in Lahore, Pakistan, to meet an old Islamic scholar who was almost blind. And I walked down, knocked on his door, opened the door, and he looked at me and he said, are you with the CIA? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I remember one time visiting a guy who was um, a religious man, and he had a he, he was uh, a fundamentalist, and he had uh, about a 15-foot wall with machine guns in it, and I walked in, and there were uh, uh, Uzis for about uh, 40 yards when I went in to see the great man, and I uh, talked with him, and afterwards, uh, I found out in the, in the newspaper the next day that there were seven rockets aimed at his compound on the day I was there, oh, and wow. so uh, he said uh, to me the next day, Uh, It was so wonderful having you here, and I believe in the United Religions. He's now, when you get to Egypt, you got to see my best friend who's head of the fundamentalists there. And I said, no, I'll I'll just send them a brochure. (laughs) 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 But um, we've always, we've had about a miracle a day. And uh, one of the first miracles, when I went around the world to speak with the religious leaders to see if that's where we ought to start, Somebody in San Francisco wrote a uh, an article about this and put it on the uh, uh, you know the news and uh, nobody in the uh, uh, nation picked it up except Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, it so happened on that day in Cleveland, Ohio, one fella opened the paper and read it. And inside Case Western Reserve School of Management, there's a little school called Social Innovation for Global Management. He called up on the phone and he said, uh, we work in 50 countries of the world on initiatives that will change the next century. <clears throat> Yours is the most important initiative we have ever seen. We will work for you for nothing. We will help you design every event that you need design between now and the beginning of the United Religions. And we'll take you by the hand to 50 countries of the world and we'll introduce you to people you need to know. Wow. To have a phone call like that this is unbelievable. Uh, they've been also about as spiritual as any people we've ever worked with, and these are people from a school of management. What we've discovered is that religion can't get from here to there without the help of other resources. Religions know a great deal about competition. They know nothing about cooperation. We're going to have to learn from schools of management, from astronauts, from uh, financiers, from all kinds of medical people, all kinds of people who are learning to cooperate all over the world. Religion's got to just have a little bit of humility and be ready to learn from other disciplines about how you cooperate. You know, there's something that I've found out, and this is something actually that a lot of uh, teachers have talked about, people like Joseph Campbell, et cetera, Mm -hmm. et cetera, that you validate a path like this based on how much help comes from unexpected directions. Right. One of, the, mm-hmm. one of the people that I stumbled upon is the man who invented the visa card, <laughs> D. Hawk. Um, he, said, he said when he was uh, going around the world trying to sell the idea of, of the visa card, 
He said he went to a great big bank in Germany, and a man was hitting his fist saying, there will never be a Visa card in Germany. And uh, so D said, <laughs> he said, you know, when every country in the world has a Visa card, there's got to be the last country that ever has it, and why shouldn't that country be Germany? And he said, inside the last country, there's got to be the last bank. And he said, why shouldn't it be your bank? And he said, inside the last bank, there's got to be the last president in the world who has the Visa card. And he said, why shouldn't it be you, sir? And I thought, that's my kind of man. <laughs> <laughs> but we've learned how to think globally. Uh, how, how you create something where you invest the greatest amount of authority in the smallest unit, where you keep it unbureaucratic, decentralized and how you uh, create a whole universe of people at the grassroots level and let them go. Uh, and what we found is that uh, the, self, the principle of self-organizing will cross over the barriers of religion and allow people to get on with the, uh, the very things they need to get on with at the local level. And uh, so it bees uh... Uh, you in 10 years have gone from a kind of an idea that happened to you one night to a, an organization, a conference, and a charter signing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, and how did this come to you? I mean, did, did you have to work hard? These, did these people come? Uh, did they come from unexpected places? I mean, did, did, were yeah. you, did you find yourself in those sort of circumstances? Money, things like right. that? Well, um, the first thing I did was uh, to get an office, hire a staff. Now, I'm a bishop. I'm working with a diocese. I serve uh, 87 churches and 30 schools and 65 institutions like uh, hospitals and clinics, and we house 950 homeless every night. So I've got a fairly demanding job. And so uh, I went out and hired a staff got an office, and uh, everybody got going. Uh, I went to two banks and got two lines of credit for $500,000 apiece. Uh, a couple of years ago, well, last year about this time, I was about $800,000 in debt, wow. uh, work going all over the world, and um, um, miracles happen. We're out of debt. Uh, we're doing fine. Mm. Uh, we're solvent. We're in the black. Um, uh, an interesting story, the phone rang last summer, and one person uh, said that uh, she had some money to give away and nobody would take it. <laughs> <laughs> I never get those calls. She said, would you like it? And we said, yes. And so uh, the person who was on the phone forgot to ask how much it was. So we just uh, went on with our meeting, and uh, uh, about three days later, a check for a million dollars showed up. Uh, Every once in a while, you look up into the sky and you say, I think I got it. You want this to happen, don't you? 